Morning, everybody. It's Joe from Adult Education Center on Main Street in Winnipeg. It is March 27th. That's a Friday morning at about 11 a.m. And this is take three of the same video I've been working on since 9.30. So anyway, let's see if this one works. Uh, we're talking about the conservation of momentum. And we have, just to refresh your memory, memory we have talked about one dimension so far. In other words, two cars colliding head on, um, two billiard balls colliding head on. Uh, what else can I say? Oh yeah, somebody running off a, a dock, jumping into a boat, in the stationary boat, and the person, they carry on in a straight line. All the things that could be related to that sort of stuff. That is one dimension. But now we're going to take that to a new step and we're going to talk about two dimensions. And uh, the big idea is this. Momentum is conserved in the sideways directions and the up and down directions. In other words, the X and Y directions. Okay, we're gonna when something is done in in two dimensions, we'll overlap, overlay a coordinate system of some sort, and just treat it as x and y coordinates. So here we go. Here's our question: A glancing collision where only one object initially moves, and uh, we're gonna use the example of a curling rock, and uh, but don't forget this big idea because I, I always go back to a big idea okay you have to have something to, to hang your solution on now um, one of the things I did in the last video where I trashed it was I um, incorrectly use a term so there's two types of answers or maybe a combination of the two there's something called a quantitative answer in other words you give me a quantity at the end of the question and units that go with it. But then there's also the qualitative answer. And I'm most concerned with the qualitative answer today because that's what gets into our soul. Not the quantity, not all those numbers, but the actual what's going on here. And so any numbers I do use, I want them to be as simple as possible. Okay, so I pick numbers like 10 to numbers like that. Um, so here's our situation. We have M1. That's curling rock number one. And M stands for mass. Mass one, I guess that there it is. Yeah, I kind of colored it red. You can see there's some uh, sticky things up there too. This That's because this is take three. Uh, so what do you think if this is mass one, what do you think this guy would be called in his mass too? How about that, eh? Um, so you can see that the dotted line shows that there's going to be a glancing blow between these two objects. And um, the law that we're talking about here is called the conservation of momentum. What does that mean? It means that all the momentum at the beginning of an of a collision will be conserved at the end of the collision and we're going to make that simple we're going to disregard any friction from outside forces and all that stuff that can come later okay so we're going to assume that all the momentum is conserved not only that but momentum has a direction and momentum's the mo the direction of the momentum in this case at the very beginning of our situation this curling rock was going that way we're going to call that east and i'm going to declare that right up here in my question okay let east be the positive direction now, if I end up uh, doing some number crunching and whatnot, and 
all that sort of stuff. I want to make sure that if I end up with a negative number, I interpret the meaning of that negative number. So uh, I encourage you all, always write, let something be the positive direction. And then I know I can follow your solutions. So momentum has a definition, a scientific definition. And really, this is it right here. I'm going to circle this. Momentum, represented by the letter P, the lowercase p, is equal to uh, the mass of the object time how times how fast it's going. Okay? So, in other words, the momentum of this system here is uh, 10 kilograms times 2 meters per second. You multiply the numbers together and you also multiply the units together. You don't just do numbers, you have to do units as well. And I include my direction. If I had not have included that direction, I would have assumed this direction simply because I stated this thing up here. Okay, so um, for final thing for this page, let me just drop this a little bit. So the final point I want to make on here is the momentum after the collision is equal to, this is an ugly equal sign if you ever asked me, okay, is equal to the momentum before the collision. Okay, so let us uh, flip the page here and see what we're gonna see what we're at. How many how many minutes am I at? I'm at seven minutes. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I was off on a tangent on one of them. So one final statement for this for this video. That is, since all the momentum initially was east, That's how I uh, use my unit east. Well, oh, let me put that up. There, okay, there we are. Since all the momentum initially was east, all the final momentum will also be east. Now, let's, let me just clarify that. I've got uh, 837 right there. Is that 8 or 6? Oh, that's 8. You know that when the two rocks collide, I'm going to go like this, one rock is going to head off that way. And the other rock is going to head off that way. And you might say, well, Joe, there's, uh, they're going um, a little, some, some of their motion is east and some of their motion is south. Or some of the motion is, e on this one, some of it is east, but there's a component going that way. And you would be absolutely right. But what I want to say is this, the total, the total momentum is going to be as follows. I've got all the east momentum in red for that one. I've got all the east momentum in red for that one. 
but there's components and that's where I want to add this other color I don't know if you're going to be able to see it very well or not I'll just do it many times this rock here is M1 it's going to be going partly east and partly north so I want to do this here and I guess this is purple yeah so I've split M1's action into two components the action that goes pure east and the action that goes pure north and I'm going to split this guy's action as well. I'm going to say um, all the action on this mass here is we can split it up into its component parts. You've got the red component going east and the purple component going south. So at this point, you might be totally confused. You might be hanging in there and enjoying yourself. I don't know. But when I go, let me just say this for one second for those of you who are not quite following along. If I am standing, oh, I'll, I'll say this. We'll put this down for a second. So this is an aside for those of you who, who, uh, who need it. If I'm standing here, and this is a big schoolyard, and I want to go here, what would I normally do? I would go walk straight across, because that's the shortest way, right? The problem is that that's not all there is to it. This angled, this angled direction here has two parts. It's got a north direction component and it's got an east direction component, or sorry, west direction component. And I'm going to a certain degree northwest. I'm acknowledging the fact that there's north in my walk and there's west in my walk. Just like the curling rocks back here. Yeah, the curling rock is going off on an angle, but the reality is there's part of it going pure east and there's part of it going pure south. Okay, I'll take that up in a minute. We've gone almost 13 minutes. Take care. I'll see you in a minute.